Hey guys, today we're going to take a look at graphing cube root functions. We've been talking about square roots, and now it's time to look at another common one, the cube root graph. So you're going to need something to write with, obviously, and your graph paper in your notebook, and then a calculator is very handy. So the first thing we want to do is look at the cube root graph, the parent function, the typical cube root graph. Please make sure that you do write this one in your notes. We're going to go ahead and do the cube root of x. So we're going to need to make a table. Now, cube roots are different than square roots. We can have negative values inside cube roots. We can't inside of a square root because that turns it imaginary. So for our table here, we don't need to start at 0. We do need to include some negative values. And then we'll go ahead and calculate those using a calculator. So for this first one, we would type in the cube root of negative 2. And if you can't find your cube root button on your calculator, you can go ahead and use negative 2 to the 1 third power. That is also sufficient to help you figure out what that value would be. So I'm going to take the cube root of negative 2. And it's not going to be a great answer because it's not one that would be in our chart. And this leaves me with negative 1.3. And then I'll do the same thing with the negative 1 in there. That gives me an answer of negative 1. Cube root of 0, 0. Cube root of 1 is 1. Cube root of 2, positive, is 1.3. So when we make a picture of this on our graph, you guys, we'll go ahead and plot those points. So draw yourself an x and y axis. Okay, like that, and I have an animated one here, so I'll bring that up. And here's my picture. So you can see the key points, negative 2, negative 1.3, negative 1, negative 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and 2, 1.3. It makes sort of a wave, if you will, okay? If I was going to describe what that looks like, it makes sort of a wave. Notice that it does have two sides and two arrows. It doesn't have a definite starting point like the square root graph. The square root graph had a start. It went in one direction. The cube root graph is more that shape. So we're going to be taking a look at how this is set up differently and how we need to work these tables today. Let's finish up with our domain and range. Because I can plug in negative values and positive values, my domain will be all reals. It has two sides of this graph, and I can plug in both positive and negative answers. My range will also be all reals because I'm getting both positive and negative answers and zero there. I don't have a definite limitation like I did on the square roots. So remember what we talked about shifting with square roots? The same thing applies to cube roots. Anything inside the root sign will move it left or right. Anything outside will move it up or down. Negative in front flips it over. And you can have multiple things happening when you take a look at these graphs. So to summarize those shortcuts again, if you need this part, Vertical shift up and down will be on the outside of that root sign at the end. Horizontal shift or left and right will be inside. And then we could have a stretch or compression, a vertical stretch or compression, so making it taller or wider, it looks like, um, there outside the function. And then the negative in front will tell me I need to reflect it or flip it over. So let's look at this first example. We're going to do two, and then we're done. So if I was going to describe the shift in this one, and that's where we want to start, we would say that this is moving to the right 2, then up 1. So my very first dot I would be plotting would be at 2, 1. Now when I go to find other dots to plot here to make other points for my table, remember that this graph has two sides. So I don't want to start my table with 2, 1. I want 2, 1 to be in the middle of the table so I can choose numbers on either side to see the two halves. So I'll choose a couple numbers less than that. Oop, three and four, how about? A couple numbers greater than that. And then I'll go ahead and plug those in. So I would type in the cube root of 0 subtract 2 and then add 1 to it. So the cube root of negative 2 and then add 1 to it. You'll need to either find the cube root button on your calculator or take all of this to the 1 third power. So I'll take 0 subtract 2. And then plus 1 on cube root, negative 0.26. And then I'll go ahead and change that 0 into a 1 now. So this becomes a 1 right here. And that gives me a 0 as my final answer. 
Then I'll type in the cube root of, and I'm going to change that to a 3 because I don't have to do 2. I already know what that's going to be. 2, and then the cube root of 4, subtract 2, and then add 1. So that is 2.3-ish, okay, 2.26. Oops, let me change that. Okay, so now let's go plot. Go into plot. Zero down point two six one zero two one we already have three two and then four two point six not a straight line <laughs> a wave okay arrows on either end and again because there aren't the same num amount of limitations here on my x values and y values my domain and range will be all real numbers okay let's do another example this one has a negative sign in front. Remember, all that does is flip this graph over, so the wave's going to look just a little bit differently, but the shifting still works. So let's figure out where we put our first dot here. We need to go to the left 5, because we have a plus 5 inside that function. And there isn't anything out here for me to move up or down, so 0 right there. So I'm just going to go to the left 5. Okay, that's the middle of my wave. So the point negative 5, 0 is the middle of my wave. I need to choose things on either side. So like negative 6 maybe, negative 7, negative 4, negative 3. And be careful when you type it in your calculator. Negative cube root, negative 7 plus 5 inside the root sign. So that would be the same thing as the negative cube root of negative 2. So I'm going to go ahead and do this calculation. And we get 1.25 or 1.26. And then if I were to take the negative cube root of negative 6 plus 5, same idea. That would be the negative cube root of negative 1. If I were to add the negative 6 plus 5, I get 1. And if I change now to 4, negative 4, negative cube root, negative 4 plus 5, that's the negative cube root of 1. This would give me a value of negative 1. Negative cube root, negative 3 plus 5. That's the negative cube root of 2 again. So that's 1.25. So I will go ahead and plot these dots. Negative 7 up 1.25. Negative 6 up 1. There's the middle dot again. 4 down negative 1. And 3 down negative 1.25. So you can see the wave, again, has the same general look, just flipped upside down from our original one that we graphed. So again, domain, all real numbers. Range, all real numbers, because there were no limitations that we need to worry about when we plug in x values here. So these are our two examples for cubic graphs. Thank you very much for taking good notes.